So in here is my favorite piece of tech that I own. And it's not a computer, it's not even a smartphone. It's not even new, it's 10 years old. But it looks like it's from the future. But to understand why this is so cool, you first need to understand something else. Once upon a time, this was the pinnacle of technology. Tons of hardware devices, each with its own purpose. People had a camera and a VHS and a Walkman and a voice recorder and a radio and a typewriter for writing stuff. And this was true for creatives and professionals too. If you wanted to record music, well, you needed a recording studio. If you wanted to make movies, well, you needed an editing desk and a camera. And they were insanely expensive. And then piece by piece, all this hardware stuff slowly collapsed into two devices smartphones and computers. What was once plastic gears and buttons became apps neatly organized in a grid that you can access at the touch of a button. You tap it and voila, out comes a camera, an editing desk, a recording studio. But these are divided into two categories. There's creation devices like cameras, audio recording equipment, typewriters, all the things that generate stuff. And then there is consumption devices, anything that allows you to consume stuff usually made by other people. And these two are in a constant battle to get your time and your attention. And I think you already know who's winning most of the time. So this is the Teenage Engineering OP-1. And its only purpose is to create music. It's a synthesizer, drum machine, sequencer, tape recorder with four tracks. It's basically taking a piece of professional music software like Ableton or Pro Tools and squashing it into this rectangle of aluminum and plastic. The company that makes this, Teenage Engineering, focuses on making all sorts of audio devices, but they always take a design first, unconventional approach. And I hear you, this looks like a toy, one of those toy keyboards for children. But it's actually been used to produce actual music by world famous artists like John Mayer, Tame Impala, Skrillex, Flume, Pharrell Williams, and the list goes on, there's hundreds of them. It's even in the music video for this Swedish House Mafia song that I cannot play for copyright reason, but that I can just recreate. But there is a specific reason why this is my favorite piece of tech that I own. I mean, it's definitely not the most useful in my daily life. It doesn't have a fancy processor, a 4K screen or anything like that. And even to make music, it's completely unnecessary. Software like Pro Tools can do everything that this thing does with tons more features, plugins, you can record instruments. But this is exactly the point. I love the OP-1 because it's very constrained and it's a pure creation device. The idea that in an age with AI and computers and phones that can do everything and powerful software that can replace entire rooms of hardware stuff, there are still beautiful devices solely built with the purpose of creating. No Wi-Fi, no notification, no Bluetooth, no fancy screen. Even though I'll show you later what's on the screen, it's pretty cool. As our computers and smartphones have become the hub for everything we do, the battle for consumption versus creation happens daily. It's you wanting to work on that project, but after a while it's so easy to just open Instagram or get distracted and decide to watch some Netflix. Because it's all there on the same device. And creation is a devious beast because you need to be intentional. We have in our hands every day the tools that can potentially make you a painter, a musician, a photographer, a movie director, a designer, but very few people actually end up using them for that. They are absorbed by the great consumption machine. And if you think about the great creatives of our age, many of them started because they got a creation device when they were young. A young Steven Spielberg with his first camera. Hadn't they gotten that camera or that guitar or whatever that is, they probably wouldn't have ended up doing what they did. There is a famous rule online called the 991 rule. In an online setting, 90% of people are there just watching, browsing, not contributing. 9% are maybe here on YouTube, people that comment on videos. And only 1% are actual creators. And I feel like this is exactly the same rule for how we use our devices. And this is the beauty of the OP-1. There are no distractions. When I'm traveling, sometimes I bring it with me and I can leave my phone at home and just go to the park or to a coffee shop and simply create. There are no opportunities to consume anything. With tools like this, 
it's also much easier to get into the flow state, where you are completely absorbed by what you are doing. Now, I need to come clean here. I'm not a producer, I can play some shitty guitar and some drums, and that's basically it. Making music is something that I find very satisfying, but that I do just for fun. I'm kind of bad at it too. One day I would love to produce all the music that I use in my videos myself, but I'm definitely not there yet, and to get music for my videos, I've always used Epidemic Sound. And now they kindly reached out to sponsor this very video. Since I started making videos in English in 2021, all the music and sound effects I have used is from Epidemic Sound. And having such high quality music to choose from is an important ingredient to make videos that get millions of views. For each video I make, I usually spend three to four hours just on audio, music and sound effects, because it's just so important and underrated. And most importantly, it's fun. I have fun finding the right song for the right moment, and Epidemic Sound makes it so easy. I can go the nerdy way and go find the perfect subgenre and filter for moods and BPMs, or I can be inspired by tons of pre-made playlists. And they also have a huge library of sound effects too. I have my main ones that I use in most of my videos saved up in my editing software so I can just drag and drop them. I'm excited to be partnering with Epidemic Sound because it's what I've been using since I started my channel. And for you creative viewers, you can click the link in the description to get 30 days for free and 50% off the personal or commercial plan for new users. But coming back to the OP1, the thing that makes this thing incredible is the design. From an aesthetic point of view, the color palette here is minimal but with these punchy colors. The case is made out of metal and it feels so sturdy and solid. The knobs are so satisfying to use. But design is not just aesthetics, it's function. And this thing has the best software design of any tech product I've ever used, period. Usually professional music software looks like this. A maze of screens and plugins and controls and setting that takes weeks to learn. Well, with this, I learned to use it with a 30 minute tutorial and I was off to the races. This is the perfect embodiment of the quote, simplicity is the ultimate sophistication. It's using cues from the physical world, like the tape recorder where you can actually spin the tape just like in the real world. But also instead of showing you numbers or sliders for all the parameters that you can set, they turned it into fun, visual and stupid mini games. This is the cow effect and you can play around with the knobs to get what you need. You want a sequencer? Here's some monkeys playing drums. Here's a 3D cool visualization of the strings moving and you can manipulate it with the knobs. And there's just so many of these. It's giving you the feeling that you can manipulate sound with your hands and it's just <laughs> incredible. Now let's make it clear. Pure creation devices like the OP1 or a nice camera are amazing. But in a world where anyone with a smartphone or a computer can do anything with one device from their bedroom, they are kind of unnecessary. Not many people should run out and buy this thing. Also because this one costs more than a thousand dollars. But something interesting is happening. Specialized devices are starting to come back. And I think we'll see more of that in the future. Take film cameras, for example. You can take much better photos with your phone and you can even emulate the film camera effect and feel. But there is something magical about having a dedicated device that is just for creating. It's so intentional. This is the Panagraphica, an AI camera that doesn't have a lens, but that generates pictures fully with AI based on where you are located with the camera, which is not a new thing. You could just type a prompt in your computer and out comes the image. But here you have a physical device that is actually more limited, but also more interesting to use. Because sometimes the limitations of the devices that you're using are an asset and not a liability. Take the Polaroid camera. When it launched, there were way better cameras. The lens was fixed and it had this unpredictable color tint to the images. But the limitation of the device is what made it great. And it quickly became a staple of artists like Andy Warhol. The more our computers and smartphones became powerful and absorbed the capabilities of all the devices that we're using around us, the more I feel like we'll slowly start to go back to wanting to use something separate something that is just an intentional creation device. Just like the OP1 is for music, and that doesn't have us fall into the trap of consuming content or scrolling TikTok on the same device. And so now go out and create, but if you feel like consuming just a bit more, here's another video that you might enjoy.